Okay, my name is Arturs. And I'm Ross. Good morning. Uh, yeah. I'm a designer at Willowbright. Ross is programmer. And we're going to do a talk about Dart at 60 FPS. Probably most of you have figured out already that this talk is going to be about games, game development to be more specific. And we're going to talk about uh, mobile game development. Uh, a little bit about ourselves. We have we have done mobile game development in the past, me and Ross, but this is the, our first project together. So to make things a bit more interesting, uh, we decided to make uh, to go on a little quest. We wanted for this time, we wanted to make the game that is as per performant as possible. So we wanted to go on a quest of performance, and as in each like. To make the quest interesting, there you need challenges. To make the, um, to make the quest interesting, you need challenges, and so we needed to set out challenges for ourselves. But before we could do that, the challenges got us. Like member of our team, very early on the project, broke his arm, and actually that was a very huge drawback because he was a programmer, <laughs> <laughs> and. So we decided we need to cheer him up. Uh, in video games, you cheer up a person by giving a power up or giving some health bars or, or stuff like that. But in real life, like we are not medics, we can't help him. So we had to figure out some way to emotionally help the guy to feel better and to help ourselves to feel better. So we made a simple get better card or get well card say as you like. And that's a very short story how our first two characters were born for the game. So let's get back to the challenges of performance. Let's go back to the performance. So we decided to set up, set out challenges for ourselves. First challenge for us was the memory. Uh, a lot of my friends have Android phones, and most of them have low-end Android phones. And they all have the same problem, is that they have very low memory for the phone memory, and they can't install anything on the phone. They have to delete something to install again the new app or game. So we, we set a goal that even though their phone memory is full, we still have to squeeze in our game on their phones. So even though they think they can't install it, they still can't do it. So after some other research, we decided that our app, our game, has to be less than 20 megabytes. The next challenge was is performance for us. So here's the exhibit A, my phone, which is Sony Ericsson Xperia, Ray, and it's a, it's a pretty old phone, and I've never actually been able. I've been developing games for a while, and I've never been able to play them on my phone because it has only single core, one gigahertz CPU. And for the first time, I actually wanted to develop a game that can be played either on high-end devices and low-end devices. So we set ourselves a goal. So, so the game has to run on single core, one gigahertz GPU as CPU, uh, as well as, as the high-end devices. The next challenge was loading. We, we knew that the loading has to be fast. Uh, we really didn't know. We didn't, we, didn't have, we didn't have any preferences how fast it should be. So we just said, it has to be fast. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll know when we see it, if it's fast. The next thing we wanted to achieve was unique look and unique feel. Yeah, we, we're going to return to that later. So I'll give the stage to Ross, my friend. Yeah. So as Arturs has shown you, we had kind of some pretty specific goals for this game uh, in terms of performance and also in terms of the design of the game. So we knew that in order to reach that goal, we were going to have to build some custom tools for our game. And so once we, we pretty much had decided that at the beginning, so the next step was to choose, you know, what technology are we going to use to build these tools? And kind of the, our first instinct was, okay, well, maybe we're going to use .NET and the C-sharp language. 
that's you know widely used for game tools, and there's a good reason for that. You know, that's awesome technology. But we had this idea that for mobile games in particular, that there could be an even better solution, and we thought that that was Dart and the web platform. So I'm going to talk about a few of the larger challenges we had in making our game, and about and I'll tell you about how Dart and the web platform kind of really aligned with our solutions to those challenges. So. The first issue was the issue of graphics. Now, a lot of mobile games today are made using a roster graphic approach, and when you make a game in that, with that type of graphics, you have a lot of textures, and these textures will end up taking up a large percentage of your assets for your game. Uh, they can be really big, and then they're also big once you get them loaded into memory, and also, there's this issue of device fragmentation. So a lot of different GPUs support different texture formats, and they have different quirks and different bugs between them. So if you use a lot of raster graphics, a lot of textures in your game, you're going to spend a lot of time dealing with all those issues. So the alternative to that is to use vector graphics. And vector graphics are really awesome because your assets will get a lot smaller when you switch to using vector graphics because you're now just storing the, the data, the instructions, to tell the GPU how to do its job, which is rasterization. And as you can see with this little dog character we have, you're going to have crisp, sharp graphics no matter what resolution. And this is really important for mobile to be able to have your, your game, your app look crisp across all different devices. So we've been using vector graphics in Dart for our game, and we found it to be a great fit in Dart. For example, in our editor, we're able to actually use the DOM's SVG parser to parse SVGs for us and import them into our editor. So we got that functionality right out of the box with the web platform, and we didn't have to write any code for that ourselves, which was awesome. So the next kind of big challenge for making our game is the issue of audio. And there's actually a lot of similarities between audio and graphics in that pre-rendered audio files like WAV files or even compressed files like MP3 or OGG, uh, they'll take up a lot of space in your assets, again, just like textures. And again, once you get them loaded, they're going to take a lot of memory. And you're also going to have, again, a lot of device fragmentation. Different devices will support different audio formats, They'll have different native sampling rates. And there's, you're going to deal with a lot of device issues, again, if you go that route. So we decided we wanted to have a similar solution to what we had for graphics and render our audio dynamically at runtime. And to do that, we wanted to use the MIDI protocol. So when I first say MIDI, you probably have some idea in your mind of what that is. And it's probably similar to what we had when we we first started thinking we might use it. Uh, but in reality, MIDI is a protocol for describing musical data. And like when we use vector graphics and we're just storing the instructions to tell the GPU how to draw, with MIDI, we're able to just store the instructions and the data that tell the device how to render the audio at runtime. So our assets get a lot smaller again. And we avoid a lot of that device fragmentation because the device is going to render the audio in a format that it can deal with. So the Dart and the web platform really aligned with the solution for us because of the web MIDI standard, which is now available in Chrome, and you can access that from Dart. So again, we found the web platform to be really appealing here for our audio. Um, so the the last challenge I'd like to talk about is this issue of simulation. And a lot of game development workflows that I've used in the past have dealt with artists and designers creating assets for the game and kind of some standalone editors which will export files. And then those files will typically go through some build process and create a binary package which they then load into some standalone desktop emulator for OpenGL ES 
and then they can see the results of their change running in a game. Now the problem with that approach is that as the number of assets in your game gets larger and larger, this time between when an artist or designer can make a change to when they can see the effect of that change running in the game gets longer and longer. So we, we knew that we wanted a much tighter like edit refresh cycle, uh, similar to what web developers have um, when they're doing their work. So this is where the web platform became attractive to us, to us again, because it's, it's built to do these types of things. And WebGL 1.0 is basically the same thing as OpenGL ES 2.0, which is what you want to use probably if you're making a game for mobile. So what we actually did was develop our game engine in Dart first, and we were able to do a lot of iterations just in this simulation environment, building our engine, and get it you know, solid and working the way we wanted to, and then later port that in a pretty straightforward manner to native mobile platforms. So just to show you one small advantage of having this simulation environment, an issue that mobile game developers would be fam quite familiar with is this issue of losing the graphics context. So it can pretty much happen at any time, and you want your game to be able to react to that event and recover without the user noticing, basically. So I'm going to just see if I can lose the graphics context. And wow, you see that my presentation has gone blank here. So I'll see if I can restore it. Cool. So I'm going to leave full screen, and maybe we can see what's going on here. So actually, our presentation has been running in our simulator here in Dart. And you can see behind it, we have our editor. So these two windows are a, a Chrome map that's written in Dart. And probably one of the first things you might want to know is which technologies or packages we use to build this GUI. So in the editor here, I'll show you. Okay, so one thing we really love about Dart is that it makes it easy for us to work directly with the platform. Um, we don't, we're not, we didn't really want to use a lot of frameworks, and you know, with Dart, we can work directly with the Dart HTML library and be very productive. So actually, everything you see here is just written with Dart HTML. And in the middle, it's a WebGL canvas. And then the property grid and the file tree are all just custom elements. And actually, the, the property grid here and the file tree are open source on GitHub and Pub. So you can explore the code and see how we built those or even use them yourself if you like. So that's, that's our editor. And I'm going to pass it back to Arturs, and he's going to show you a bit of how we use this, this tool. So I'm back. So you're going to create a simple level in our, in our editor. So we're going to just grab a pencil, adjust the view a bit, and you can see how we are drawing a level. Level, it's uh, like the level. I'm, I'm drawing a Bezier curve here. So I am enabled the, the debug mode. And let's adjust some knobs. Yeah. Let's change the color somewhere. So this would be a practical like, terrain for the level. So we would need some, some spawn point. We would define some, somehow where we'll have a spawn point. For that, we have items. As you can see, I'm rolling back. It's a huge list of items you have. And here's a scripted item called spawn point. You can see the script is attached here. We can just double click it and put it in the scene. Let's place it here. So we have a spawn point, so we need a finish line. So we just grab a finish line. This is the same object with scripts. And put it up here in the hill. And just let it play and see what's going on. And we have our character. The sun is shining. We can hit play. We can jump around. But the finish line is too high. We can't get there. So. We're going to use the full power of edit refresh cycle 
in our editor, and we just kind of draw here a small island to help us out. Okay, just need some adjustments. Da, 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 da. I hope it won't be too close. Let's just hit play and see again what's going on. So now we can get higher, but it's still not enough. So we need some tool. Oh, it was, yeah, I almost got there. So we can add interactive items. So let's add this brown object. We'll see what it can do for us. Let's add it here. I hope we'll get there. So I'll just hit play. And let's jump again. Da, 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 da. And yay! Yeah. Yeah. Got to the finish line. So now I'm going to show you the complete level, how it looks in the editor. I'm going to load our work file. So let's go to the scene, select level. It's 2 7. Yes. So here you can see a complete scene in your editor. This is without the debug mode. Like if I enable the debug mode, it looks like this. So for you, I'm going to disable it so you can enjoy the full view of the scene. The other good thing about using SVGs is that you can dynamically change colors. So right now we have all assets prepared in purple and blue. But let's say we want a night scene. So we just swap the color palettes. And we have a night here going on. So we're going to play a bit this level to show you how it looks from inside. Like we're going to start out here in the dungeons, and we're going to try to get up here. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to get there, because this is a very hard level. Uh, let's do it full screen. Yeah. So we're going to refresh. OK. So. Let's go switch the cards. So for this event, like to celebrate this event, we actually added <laughs> a dart mobile. <laughs> and for a couple of days, it will be like for in-game coins. You have to collect coins in the level. And for the couple of days, we're going to leave it for just 100 coins if anybody wants to, to buy it and play around. Later on, it will be harder to unlock. So just unlock it. Let's go have some fun. We are actually in the wrong level. This is not the one I showed you. So we're going to use privileges. Because this is developer's mode, I actually can go in the levels that are not unlocked. <laughs> so I'm cheating. <laughs> so this is the level I showed you, the castle scene. OK. So here you can see the game. Ah! OK, I can do this. I can do this. Okay, here is one nasty robot. Okay, this one is, he always, like when you get on the edge, he always gets you. You're going to find it out if you're going to play the game. Yeah. Okay, probably you're going to see, you've seen enough. Let's return to our presentation. I'm going to load back the presentation file now. So, yeah, this is presentation file. You're going to hit play, second part, full screen, refresh, second part again. So in the beginning, I talked about performance goals. So the question is, did we reach our goals? The first goal was, the first challenge for us was memory. So we, we wanted the app to be below 20 megabytes. So right now, the game is are somewhere around 13 megabytes. It's when you have installed it, the actual APK size is somewhere around 7 megabytes. So we, we get that challenge, the performance challenge. The goal was to run on my phone, which, ha which has like single core, one gigahertz CPU. And we actually, we are, we're even running the game on single core, 600 megahertz CPU. And it runs fine, it's playable. The loading time. We want it to be fast. 
In the end, we, end, uh, we ended up putting a two second delay in the splash screen. It's the one where you see logo when you open the app. We, we needed to put two second delay in it. So you, so you could actually see the splash screen. Otherwise, it would just splash. Like, it would do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it would splash you. And we have no loading time between levels. About unique look, so we're using, because we're using uh, SVGs, and there is a weird mixture, but like nice mixture, with SVGs and 3D. As you saw, the cards were actually in 3D, and some other background objects are in 3D. And yeah, because you use this mix, weird mixture and different colors, I kind of think we achieved unique look, but there are no measurements for that. I can't measure that. And the unique feel, yeah, for these last two, we have no measurements. So probably you have to go to the Google Play Store to find it out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can I play? I want to play with your dev tools. Hmm? Can we buy your dev tools? Not we, Google. I'll get in trouble uh, for that. But like. Dev tools. <laughs> I, want to like, I want to build a level that looks so much fun. Uh, we can work some. Okay. It's, it's, it's a goshable. Do a you goshable. have any feature requests? Like, if you human. <laughs> feature. No. Wasn't that amazing? Beautiful. We have about two, three minutes for questions. We could do a couple minutes of questions. So I, we have to ask Ross, he's a programmer, I'm just a designer. <laughs> Questions, anyone? All the way in the back. Yes, you, the one who's looking confused if I'm pointing at you. I am pointing at you. Yes, I can hear you. We'll repeat your question. Okay, so how, what was your time estimate yeah. for porting code from running in the simulator to running in native OpenGLS on ES on Android, iOS? Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, okay. so yeah, we spent, our, our native engine is in C++ uh, so that we can run it on Android or iOS or other platforms. So adding new platforms, once we have that native engine, can be done in one or two months, as an estimate. But th to build out that engine the first time, we spent about four months uh, to, to do the initial port. With V, he wants to say he did it. <laughs> he was the only one working on it. But it, it was fairly s straightforward. I mean, things just take time. But there were no like, major issues that popped up, like going from the, the WebGL to the OpenGL ES 2.0. There were, it was really quite smooth. So. Same person has another question. Oh, OK. <laughs> cool. And obviously, you guys will be around to answer questions and other things. Yep. Yep. Um, super exciting stuff. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you. Thanks.